So I've mentioned in my previous videos, I've used different technologies from Fabaro, uh, SciTech Comfort that used X10, and I chose Loxon as a platform. And I managed to acquire one of these demo boxes uh, a couple of years ago, before, just before we moved house down to uh, the project home here. And these are designed for Loxon installers to be able to demonstrate the solution to their uh, potential clients. And it includes a number of the base uh, modules of Loxon. So the, the brains of Loxon is the mini server that you see here. So the, all of these components are DIN rail mounted, go into a, a cabinet. I'm going to be using a future automation cabinet. So the Loxon mini server here in this cabinet connects to um, a series of relay outputs, um, a series of uh, digital inputs, so switches and analog inputs. And then there are a few outputs in this tray normally, so there's an RGB strip, um, other inputs. I've taken a PIR sensor off here that I've used elsewhere currently. So my system is going to be a combination of um, mains switched and dimmed lighting, uh, RGBW lighting, um, and full house audio. So I'll, I'll put a diagram of what my uh, current draft panel design that um, Hugh at uh, Thames Valley Automation has put together for me. We're still finally tuning that at the moment. But that will have the basic locks on mini server. So this is the brains of the system. This connects via Ethernet and is managed locally. It doesn't need cloud control. Um, you can connect and configure and manage it remotely. So you know, I can do some of the programming myself or Hugh can connect um, and make changes for me as well, which is great. Um, it has uh, eight digital inputs, um, four analog inputs, and eight relays. It also has connection to TREE. So TREE is the cabling protocol system that is used by Loxon. My understanding is a little bit like CAN bus. So you have a 24 volt DC bus and then a data bus that can connect to uh, devices around the home. Now I've used KNX cable for that. The difference between KNX cable and TREE cable is the TREE cable has a th thicker set of conductors, I think one and a half mil, to allow you to power um, a number of more power hungry tree devices. Uh, the first one of those that would use more energy is the RGBW spot. Um, so as you can see, there are four wires on here. So two of those take uh, power, two of those take data, and this has a white LED in the middle and RGB LEDs around the outside. Um, and you can wire that, it's a free topology, so you can do it in, in a loop, in a radial, you can take a radial off a loop, as long as the data can communicate and the power gets to the device. All of these are individually addressable, so these have an address effectively on a network if you like. So I could have 20 of these in the ceiling and get them all to do different colours, different intensities, um, to create the scenes that I want for my environment. Now, they're a fantastic light. I've decided not to go with these. Um, they're relatively expensive, I think about 80 pounds or so each. And I found because of the, the shape of them to get the uh, white light in the middle, the beam angle was a little bit too narrow. Um, and I wasn't gonna get the lighting effects that I wanted. So I've decided to use a combination of RGBW uh, strip or tape um, and dimmable lighting. I did look at some options. Hugh had some really interesting um, white lights that had two colours, so warm white and a cool light, so you could actually use the controllers to create a, a, um, a warmth of white that you want at that point in time, and they can actually change it during the day, which is uh, interesting. I've decided not to go that route for now. Um, so we start off with the Loxon mini server. We have a, a communications network that then connects to add-on modules. So this has some um, a tree interface in it, standard. We have an additional tree interface. I think you can have 50 devices or something on each tree. Um, I've got two rings of tree that I've configured in the house for a level of redundancy. Um, you can communicate wirelessly. So one of the other units that I've got here is an air base. Um, so I can have devices like an RGB dimmer. Um, I forgot to put a cable through to my kitchen island and we want RGBW strips around the island. So thankfully I can use a wireless connection and install another RGBW controller um, in the island. Um, other things that I'm gonna be installing, um, I'm gonna be doing a whole house audio with Loxon. Um, so this is the Loxon audio server. This can work with things like Spotify. You can send music to it with Apple AirPlay. Um, you can connect your local library via USB, uh, digital imp with SPDIF. And the basic module here has uh, four outputs. So I can do two stereo zones out of that initial box. Um, I can then expand that with um, additional uh, 
stereo expansion unit so that gives us either another two rooms in mono or another stereo room uh, so I'm planning to have three rooms in stereo um, and I think three uh, maybe four rooms with mono uh, speakers in them um, and I was looking at Sonos which I've had previously uh, this is a little bit cheaper than than Sonos um, I think you're looking at about a hundred uh, 100, uh, 300 pounds with VAT for a stereo room, which is about half the price of a Sonos amplifier. Um, I, d I don't expect it to be the same audio quality as a Sonos system, but it does have the advantage of being integrated into Loxon, so it can do announcements, it can operate as the doorbell, it can be internal sounders for the alarm system. And for my uh, high quality audio, I'm gonna have a Meridian uh, digital uh, speaker set in the in the lounge. So I wasn't you know, too worried about the audio quality, it's really for general listening in bedrooms and things like that, and listening to the radio. Um, light switch wise around the house, I think I mentioned previously, we're using these um, Loxon, uh, pure touch light switches. So these have a glass panel on them, um, very slim design, and they have five touch points that we can use to control. So they're just touching the switch, or even just, if you don't understand what it is, just putting you know all your hand across it, will switch through a series of scenes. So turning lights on or moving between, in the kitchen scene where we're cooking, to dining, to uh, watching TV, just by tapping that one, two, three times, for example. Um, you can also control the shading, so we're going to be pitting electric blinds to all of the windows so we can open and close the blinds. And we can also um, use this for audio control to adjust volume, to skip tracks, those sorts of things. Uh, nice swish, swish sort of design, and it's got a little um, warm white LED in the bottom which washes down the walls. And you can see the light switch, quite a nice night light feature as well. Um, not an inexpensive switch, they're around 200 pounds each but that has temperature and humidity sensors built in. So I don't have to have other sensors on the wall. That one device does all of that for me. And I, I need to interface to uh, a number of other things on uh, the system here. And one of those in particular is the um, air source heat pump system. So that has um, a Modbus interface, so I'll need to buy an expansion module to give Modbus connectivity to the Loxon system. And then I'll use this DCOM unit here from uh, Daikin, where Modbus will connect into this with RS485, and then I'll connect into the Daikin controller. And that will allow us to see all of the information from the air source heat pump and the hot water tank, uh, looking at all of the temperatures, pressures, um, creating the weather compensation curve, uh, I believe within Loxon to push out to that, um, having the ability to boost um, the water temperature based on scenes and activity within the home. So uh, really, really interested to see how uh, all of that pans out. Um, I've also ordered another device from One Home, um, which will allow me to connect the Loxon system into Matter as a two-way communication so that I can connect with other systems, so Alexa, for example, and any other technology that there isn't a current direct interface into Loxon. Um, one of the other things I don't have here is the technology we're planning to use for the blinds is um, a combination of Velux um, roof lights where we've got four in this open plan room and another one in the hall and those are both electrically openable and would have electric shades and we'll have Somfy RTS which is a wireless protocol connected motors. So I have another gateway which is called a Somfy Tahoma and that has an open API, so we'll be able to create virtual devices and have scenes within the Loxon system which can control the blinds, the windows, and everything else. So if you can imagine, uh, you walk into the kitchen, there'll be um, presence sensors built into each room, so based on the time of day, so it's the morning, you can have a predetermined set scene which will set a level of brightness, um, open the blinds, um, tune into uh, favorite radio station or turn on the TV, um, all of those sorts of functions and you can skip through those with the, um, the touch switch controls on the wall. So, you know, pretty comprehensive. There's an awful lot of things that we can um, connect to and set up. And I'll be going through this in more detail as we finalize the design. Um, all of that panels, I think I said in my other video, is gonna be built off site. Um, I'll put a photograph of this up with the, the current design so you can see a lot of these modules that are in there. The green box is the 
mini server that you can see here, the purple box is the audio server, and the other black boxes in there are um, relay extensions. I think I've got two relay extensions to give me uh, control of uh, lighting, um, tower, electric tower radiators, uh, other devices. I think I've got another module going in here to connect to my automated uh, home and garage door as well. So, uh, pretty sophisticated setup that can be expanded over time. Um, Hugh will um, build and wire up all of that panel off-site and do some of the base programming. Uh, if you've seen in my other video, I've got all of the first fixed wiring waiting there, so that'll just be a case of trimming those wires and dressing those and connecting them into the terminal blocks along the top of the cabinet that you can see in the diagram. Um, I'm really looking forward to getting this set up. You know, what I wanted was a pretty rock-solid um, ultra reliable system that was going to run lighting but giving me the ability to hook into um, other devices um, you know I'm going to have uh, I think 10 uh, relays from this system controlling the valves for the underfloor heating as well as the Modbus interface to the air source heat pump all of that needs to be rock solid and reliable but I can see that there are other things I'm going, I'm going to want to do beyond that um, where I'm, you know, I'm probably going to end up with Home Assistant, almost certainly. I've got Somfy to Homer. Um, I've got Modbus interfaces. I'll have TCP/IP connectivity through to my Give Energy battery and gateway. Um, so beyond that rock-solid foundation, I want to be able to do things where I'm um, potentially taking advantage of the ability to integrate with some of the smart home appliances I bought from Bosch and Neff using their Home Connect so that I could, if we're on a variable tariff and the energy cost goes too high, to pause the washing machine and the dishwasher and start them again uh, when the price drops or to wait and start those devices when the solar generation reaches a certain level or the battery uh, discharges at a certain level. Um, so lots of smart things that I want to be able to do beyond that, which are the hobby element that I know a lot of us like to play with, but I wanted the foundation of the home to be reliable so that if I'm playing with something on a Raspberry Pi or whatever home assistant might be running on and I do a software update or I'm playing around with it, the house just works, right? You know, that, that bit needs to be super reliable and solid, but I can play around and do those advanced features on top. So, Sorry, you know, Dave. I'm afraid I can't do that. Uh, the locks on system and why we chose that platform. Um, it's it's um, more, certainly more expensive than what I've done before with things like Fabaro and it's in the house, you know, you can't take it with you, whereas Fabaro actually sold it to the, the guy that bought the house uh, from us, but you know, I could have taken all of that out and taken it with me. Um, but this needs to be, you know, a, a, a rock solid solution for the foundation and we can do all those fancy pieces on top. So I hope you're looking forward to following us on the journey of what we do with Loxon. This system will be coming and be commissioned over the next probably probably six to eight weeks um, and then we'll start doing those enhancements and other integrations as we move forward. Uh, love to hear any comments and feedback that you've got if you're an existing Loxon user or indeed using an alternative like KNX or Control 4. Um, any of your experiences or things that, that you've managed to do or suggestions of how we can take advantage of the technology, I'd uh, really be pleased to hear from you. Thank you once again.